the design of our cities, first-class cuisine, fashionable clothing, or a witty conversation. None of these things would be possible without a script. Hello. Welcome to a paralyzing existential moment. The moment you realize there is no script. While this may be beyond your ability or desire to comprehend, there are a few simple steps you can take to avoid a complete nihilist meltdown. First, become aware of yourself and your surroundings. What are the size, shape, and limits of your physical self? Are you a part of that chair? What are the differentiations between you and the electromagnetic impulses you move through? Should that prove too introspective, simply sit passively until another object or being enters your field of vision. Obey everything that it tells you. Now that you know what you are, it's time to find out what you can do. Rely on your sensory organs for guidance. While some of you may be ready to jump ahead to the next step, don't rush. Interacting with our physical reality is deeply complex. So, what's around you? Can you touch it? Smell it? Taste it? If this object is doing some or any of those things back to you, it's probably sentient. Now we're getting some. Let's explore the possibilities of interaction. Two objects sharing an exchange of energy. Right now, wherever you are, turn to the closest object and put your hands on it. Very good. Now make a sound. Stop it! Stop it! Don't touch me! How did that feel? Pretty good, huh? Well, the good news is, that's the building blocks of our entire cognitive existence. Everything else is just opinion. If you've made it this far, congrats. You're doing great. Advanced users, feel free to keep watching. However, if you feel slightly tired, a little confused, or irritated, this might be a good time for you to stop. Take out your cell phone, or navigate to Hulu.com. And hurry! I hear there's a new episode of The Office. Now, brave soul, is where the trouble begins. You see, there's absolutely no way for me to contextualize your consciousness within the spectrum of human experience. And that's the smallest possible parameter within which I could. You see, there's a depth to time and space that your rudimentary carbon-based brain could simply never create a representational matrix for, and thus, never understand. And what's more, there's a likelihood that the concepts of time and space are themselves a self-preserving facade. That didn't feel too good, did it? How does that feel? How does it feel to be aware of your brain both as an organ in your body and the single source of your consciousness? Go ahead, you can tell me. What did that do to you? It doesn't matter what you say to me, because we are not really interacting. I'm a recorded and edited sequential photographic representation of Timothy James Whitney. The things I do and the things I say are predetermined and edited and follow a script. You, however, still don't. Well, I hope that was helpful. It was certainly fun for me. So what should you do now? Anything. Or nothing. But technically, that's still something. Goodbye.